The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Welcome to uh, 5111. And today what we're going to do is introduce you to the course and the people teaching the course. And we're also going to let you know uh, that you are going to be part of uh, the great web exercise that is OCW, OpenCourseWare. So this course is being videotaped this year. And this is the uh, announcement that I, that I have to make. Uh, so the videotape is in the back. And, uh, if you want to uh, come up front and participate uh, in the class, you'll know that you'll be videotaped. Uh, if you want to uh, hide your face or whatever, you can do that, but please pay attention to the lectures anyway. So uh, this, this course will be available uh, on the OCW site in the future. I'm not sure exactly what that date is going to be. So today we're going to introduce the chemistry topics which we will cover in 5111 and give you general information, practical information about the course, number of points you need, uh, when the exams are, that kind of thing, policies, and introduce you to the teaching staff. I am, again, Professor Kathy Drennan, and I'm one of the lecturers in this, in this course. So because this is MIT, we are going to start with a quiz. OK, not a quiz for points or anything. Don't freak out. But I do want you to tell me who these people are. So what about this person? That's me. This is my college yearbook photo. OK, what, what about this person over here? It's not me again. Not Elizabeth Taylor. It is Lisa Kudrow, known as Phoebe on Friends. So we both went uh, to college at the same time. We went to the same college. Does anybody uh, know what college that was? Vassar College, very good. And we graduated the same year. Now, no one has to say what year that was, even if you know. Uh, but we did graduate the same year. All right, so given what you know about us, what do you think Lisa went to college to study? Computers, no. Theater, surprisingly, no. Nuclear engineering at Vassar, no for a variety of reasons. <laughs> Any other guesses? English, no. Biology, I heard it. Biology. What do you think I went to college to study? Theater, Theater correct. <laughs> and or, I hadn't made up my mind exactly, biopsychology or drama. So biopsychology was what they called sort of brain and cognitive sciences in those days. Uh, so those were two, my, uh, the two things I was thinking about. What do you think Lisa ended up majoring in in college? Theater? No. Not biopsychology. <laughs> Biology, yes. What do you think I majored in in college? This would be a bit easier. Chemistry, Chemistry correct. And of course, our professions, actress and chemistry professor. So one may ask, what happened here? <laughs> My understanding about Lisa Crudreau is that she came from a Hollywood family. She went to college and said, here's my opportunity to study the thing that I find most interesting, and that was biology. And then she went back and participated in the family business, which was, of course, the acting profession. For me, what happened? Well, I have to say, I did not like chemistry in high school. So I did not think about going to college to study chemistry. So why did I not like chemistry in high school? I think it was because of images such as this one. 
I spent a lot of time talking about the transition between alchemy and modern chemistry. I wasn't very interested in that kind of thing. And there was nothing in these photographs that really appealed to me personally. I mean, Avogadro, I'm fond of his number, um, and he is, in fact, an interesting, if not frightening looking man. Um, <laughs> this just didn't connect with me. But then I got to college and they said, well, if you're thinking about anything bio, biopsychology, biology, you have to take chemistry. And I said to my advisor, no, no. I have taken chemistry in high school and I can assure you that chemistry has no relevance whatsoever to the life sciences. And they said, well, sorry you feel that way, it's incorrect, and you have to take it anyway. So I, like some of you in this room, are, took freshman chemistry because we had to, not because we wanted to. And I, like hopefully some of you in this room, uh, discovered that chemistry was actually a lot of fun and that the chemistry I got in college was pretty much nothing like the chemistry I had seen in high school. So let me introduce you to some of the topics we're going to be covering uh, in chemistry this semester. So um, there's more detail on your syllabus, a detail of what we'll cover every day, but these are the kind of basic things that we're covering. And you don't need to write this down. You'll become familiar with it as the semester goes on. Um, we start out with some really basic principles. So up here, atomic theory, uh, periodic table bonding, uh, structures of molecules. And there will be a little bit of history uh, in, in there, um, but uh, this is mostly modern chemistry and represents the basic properties of matter. And it's the basic properties of all matter, including living matter, which was what really interested me, that connection between chemistry and biology. So then we go on to thermodynamics and chemical equilibrium. And this is really about reactions, chemical reactions. Whether a reaction will go, will it be spontaneous? If there's an equilibrium, what direction will the reaction uh, be uh, shifted in? And then, of course, not just whether the reaction will occur, but how fast it occurs is really important. So that's kinetics, how fast a reaction uh, will go. And from the perspective of someone who's a biochemist, I'm interested in, in kinetics and enzyme kinetics and in thinking about molecules that catalyze reactions in the body. And then there's acid-base equilibrium and also oxidation reduction reactions. And what is true is that most reactions that occur are either catalyzed by some kind of acid-base catalysis or involve some kind of oxidation reduction uh, reaction. And so this sort of represents a lot of, of uh, the, the, basic, the basic way reactions go. Now, whether that's a reaction in your body or a reaction in a test tube, it doesn't matter. A lot of the same principles are involved. And then we also cover transition metals, which is something that you often don't see uh, in high school. And transition metals, those uh, metals in the middle of your periodic table, have some really unique properties, which are exploited again in reactions that occur in your body and also are utilized uh, in industry, for example. So we'll talk about some of those unique properties. And if we put all of that together, we get the real fundamentals that you need to go on and study any kind of curriculum that involves chemistry. So these are, these are all the fundamentals that, that are involved in chemistry uh, that relate to physical chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, uh, biological chemistry, and are a solid foundation for studying any kind of life science. So I congratulate you of being here uh, in this class. This is really good, solid foundation for whatever you go on to do here at MIT. So normally at this point, uh, we do actually start the class with a little bit of uh, history from alchemy to modern chemistry. But um, I decided to skip that uh, this year. If you are interested in that, it's never required on any test. It never has been. Uh, but if you're interested in that, there is an OCW lecture, which you can uh, listen to. That's a, a very, an excellent lecture by Professor Sylvia Serra on that. But today, instead, I thought I would give you some examples of modern chemistry, why people now need to know chemistry, what they're doing with chemistry, what is chemistry research uh, here at MIT, and how does it utilize uh, these basic uh, principles which we'll be talking about in the course. So I'll uh, start with my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Joanne Stubby. Uh, she studies molecules. In particular, she studies biological molecules. And uh, one of the things she's very interested in is how this anti-cancer uh, drug, gemcitabine, works in the body. So it inhibits an enzyme, and she's interested in knowing how that really works. 
So enzymes are made up of amino acids. You have long chains of amino acids that form together into a protein molecule. Protein molecules in your body often act as enzymes, catalyzing reactions. So she is interested in how this molecule, gemcitabine, inhibits an enzyme. So to do those studies, she needs to know a lot of the stuff on this list. Of course, she needs to know the basic principles, but uh, she's also talking about an enzyme, so she needs to know about enzyme catalysis. Uh, she needs to know this enzyme works by both acid-base uh, chemistry and oxidation reduction. It has uh, two irons that are involved in doing the chemistry, so it includes transition metals. She thinks about how things bind, how the natural reactants bind, how the inhibitor binds, and so she needs to know what happens to the chemical equilibrium. She needs to know about the thermodynamics of those binding events, and of course, uh, you know, everything, all the basic principles are, are required here. So to do this biochemistry research, she needs to know all of these things, and she has uh, really made tremendous progress in understanding how a gemcitabine works, and it is uh, not so toxic, so it's a really good, good thing to have uh, in chemotherapy. So in addition to studying molecules, chemists often want to make molecules, uh, such as Tim Jameson, who's an organic chemist. So um, you will hear probably, hopefully, in this presidential debate, about the environment and about why saving the environment is important. And one of the things you often hear about in this discussion is about our oceans and about rainforests. And part of the reason why people want to protect those areas is because you find a lot of natural products in those regions. So a natural product is something that is made by nature. And often natural products, whether it comes from a plant or a marine organism, have some really good useful properties. And so one particular compound uh, has anti-tumor properties. So again, along this line of, of cancer research. So Tim Jameson's lab figured out how to make this thing. And uh, often that's really important because you can't get enough of the organism that naturally makes it to be able to grind that organism up and have enough that you can actually use as a, as a medicine. So you have to make more of it because nature doesn't make enough. So it's very important to figure out how, how to do that. So in doing that, uh, Tim Jameson's lab needs a lot of these things. So he needs a, a lot of uh, knowledge of bonding. He wants to form bonds in making this. He needs to know about the structures of the molecules because if the structure is wrong, it's not going to work. Uh, and often if you want to make a lot of it, you have to think about uh, the thermodynamics of the system, how the, fast the reactions will go, and uh, kinetics, and then whether they'll go, the thermodynamics. And sometimes then you need to uh, adjust the reactions, maybe use a transition metal to make it go better. So uh, these are all the things that Tim Jameson needs to know to do organic chemistry. So you'll be learning in this class a great preparation for 512, which is organic chemistry. In addition to studying molecules and making molecules, some chemists want to detect molecules. And a chemist who likes to detect molecules is Tim Swagger. So uh, Tim Swagger's lab has designed sensors that detect vapors. And so they will detect TNT, for example. And so uh, he has put this chemistry to use in this robotic arm, and they call it FIDO, uh, because often uh, dogs are the uh, creatures that have to go out and detect these things. And you know, it's, it's not a great job if you're a dog uh, to be sent out to uh, see whether there was an explosive and discover, yes, there was, a little bit too late. Uh, so uh, this is a, a much uh, nicer way to detect chemicals with this robotic arm. And here's a picture of it in, in use in Iraq. So uh, in doing this, if you go down to kind of the basic uh, principles that Tim needed to know about, oxidation reduction was really key in developing this technology. So we'll talk about that. So my final example is from uh, Alan Davison's lab. And uh, Alan is an inorganic chemist. He loved those transition metals and their unique properties. And he uh, designed this compound. It's called Cardiolite. And it's used in heart imaging. So many people uh, have relatives they know of that have had to have their heart uh, imaged. Uh, heart disease is a major problem in the United States. And there's a good chance that they had cardiolite given to them to help in that imaging process. So this, again, takes advantage of those uh, great, uh, unique, unique properties of transition metals, which we'll talk about in this course. So again, all together, this is the basis for modern chemistry. And the examples I, I just gave you are some of the things that modern chemists are working on, some of the issues that our, our country faces and our world faces, and how chemistry is involved in that. 
So not only will you have the fundamental knowledge to go on and take more courses in chemistry, uh, you will also have the fundamental knowledge uh, to go on and do undergraduate research here. And uh, here are some of the uh, 5111 undergraduate uh, researchers uh, that have come through um, my lab in particular uh, from, from this class. So it's a really nice, uh, solid foundation. So I want to encourage you to set some of your likes and dislikes from high school aside when you come to MIT, because at MIT you often see disciplines taught and emphasized very different fashion than what you've seen before. And you may discover that the thing you came here to study is not the thing that you really want to study after all. Uh, one other thing that I'll say to you is that I said these words at one point, it's true, I said when I was in high school, I said, I hate chemistry. <sighs> and now I do chemistry every day and will for the rest of my life. I love chemistry now. Be very careful what you say. Have any of you made that statement about hating a subject? Oh, tell me later what it is you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. So at MIT, things are very different. And uh, keep an open mind. Explore new areas. Take advantage of, of being at this amazing place for science and technology. And you may surprise yourself in what, what you really enjoy learning about. So uh, that's a little bit about the chemistry that we're going to cover in this class. And now we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the policies and procedures. But first, I need to introduce uh, my co-instructor for this class. And um, let me just put up her picture. You'll see her in a minute. So uh, Dr. Beth Vogel taylor So all chemistry car courses are team taught. So you have a different lecturer for the first half than the second half. And uh, Dr. Taylor will be doing most of the first half lectures, and I'll be doing most of the second half lectures. So uh, Dr. Taylor will take you from atomic theory uh, through thermodynamics, and I'll start up with chemical equilibrium, talk to you about uh, kinetics, acid base, oxidation reduction, and transition metals. So you will have both of us uh, as lecturers in this class. Now, in the past, sometimes um, students have found this whole thing a little frustrating, that they just get used to one lecture style, and then all of a sudden, there's another lecture style, and uh, that can be true. I mean, sometimes the styles of the two professors, you know, couldn't be more different. You know, think McCain Palin, odd couples. <laughs> sometimes they're more similar. And when I first, about a year and a half ago, got to know uh, Dr. Taylor, we sort of realized that we had very similar styles. And uh, we got very excited about the idea that we could teach together so that there would be much more continuity throughout the semester. And so uh, Dr. Taylor had been teaching the first half of the material in the spring, and I had been teaching the second half of the material in the fall. And we thought, wouldn't it be great uh, if we got together and, and taught in the fall? So this was actually, for a variety of reasons, a very complicated thing to request and do. And so we started a campaign and campaigned for a year and a half that we should be uh, allowed to do this course together. And finally, just a few weeks ago in August, we really didn't know up until almost when this course started that uh, permission was granted. So I have to say I am very excited now <laughs> to introduce you to uh, Dr. Taylor, uh, who I will be teaching with this semester, limited engagement, uh, who will tell you about some of the course policies. All right, thank you. OK, so before we get to some of these course policies, um, I think I'll tell you a little bit about my path to chemistry as well. Professor Drennan explained that not everyone that ends up as a chemist started off that way on their first class uh, freshman year, for example, in chemistry. And in fact, if you talk to a lot of chemists, if you talk to some of the graduate students, maybe your TAs, you'll find that that phrase, I hate chemistry, has maybe been uttered by more than one of us at some point in our lives before we realized, and once it happens, you don't go back, that actually you love chemistry, and it's hard to even remember a point where you didn't see all of these connections that it provided for you. Uh, but to give a little background of where I was sitting, where maybe you are today on the first day of chemistry, when I left uh, high school, I had no interest in chemistry whatsoever. And I have only one strong memory from high school chemistry. And that memory is shown right here, and that is the common ions. 
Did you guys have to learn the common ions? Does anyone have that in their brain somewhere for ready use? Um, I don't, in fact, so it's actually okay if you don't know all your common ions, if, if you missed that part. This is the strongest memory I have, and I remembered, A, that I didn't learn them, and that was really bad because it kept coming up. Uh, but the other thing I remember is that I had no idea why they were important. I didn't really understand what any of these molecules were. I certainly didn't understand how they even connected really to chemical reactions, much, much less other disciplines that I was interested in. I couldn't have told you, for example, if we look at a phosphate group, that that's going to be incredibly important in DNA, that it's also an incredibly important group when you're dealing with proteins and whether you're turning the function of a protein on or off. So really, I just had no context for the chemistry. So when I started in college, that wasn't even an option for me. And I was interested in a lot of things chemistry not being one of them, but one that I was very interested in was biology. Um, and the reason was, you know, we did a lot of cool labs in high school. I loved doing the dissections. It was very interesting to me to think about how different organs worked, how the heart could be a pump, how the lungs worked. And then when we got to more of a cellular level, it was even more interesting to, to see that we could actually understand how our body worked as low of a level as thinking about cells. And so that was a clear major for me to pick. I actually also was considering English and ended up being a minor in English. But I think what most of you actually having come to MIT have probably realized is sometimes it's nice to major in a science because you can't just pick up a reaction and do it in your kitchen on the weekend, whereas you can sometimes join a book group and do that. So it's kind of nice to uh, major in the thing that you're going get to get to have the opportunity to do for the rest of your life. So I actually also started pre-med. Is anyone else pre-med here? OK, so a pretty good showing. Um, so maybe you can relate to some of the reasons I wanted to be pre-med. Uh, part of it was the interest in the science and the biology. Also, you know, I wanted to help people. It, it seemed like a really clear way that I could have a career that was challenging and involved in science, but also helping others. So it seemed like a good start for me, pre-med bio. And I signed up for my, my bio class. I found out, as Professor Drennan did, that I had to take chemistry as well. I wasn't as upset. I was sort of a neutral chemistry person at this point. But I thought it was pretty smart to get it over with on the first semester. So that's what I did. Uh, and my plan was going along fine until something happened. And what happened was that chemistry was just way more interesting than I anticipated. So my perfect pre-med bio plan was getting a little shaken right from the start. And the reason that it was getting shaken was because I would learn this new principle in chemistry. And because I was taking bio at the same time, I could see the connections. And at one point, I realized, oh my gosh, chemistry is just biology. It's just looking at it one level deeper. So actually, all of my interest in biology was quickly transferred to saying, wow, now I can think about things on the molecular level. And one of the molecules that caught my attention first, and I can't remember if this was freshman or sophomore year in high school, was the first time I actually took meaning in looking at a chemical structure. And that was with the structure of penicillin here. And I know that all of you are familiar with penicillin, whether or not you know the structure or not. But the most important part of this structure is the four-membered ring here, the beta-lactam. And this was the first time I thought I could actually understand how a molecule worked because I knew something about chemistry. So for example, with penicillin, what it does is it inhibits an enzyme that builds the cell wall in bacteria, the bacterial cell wall. And if I thought about what I'd learned in chemistry, some of you know this from high school, some of you will be very familiar with this soon, is that this carbon here, for example, is bonded to three things. Does anyone know what angle? those would like to be at? 120. They want to get as far away from each other as possible. The ideal angle is 120. But what we have here is a four-membered ring. So what angle does that have to be, that bond? 90 degrees. So we have a problem here if we're thinking about keeping things at the lowest energy. So there's a lot of ring strain in this system. And I was incredibly excited that I could look at that and realize it and say, wow, that's why it's so reactive. That's why it's such a good medication. Because when it comes into contact with these bacterial cell wall building enzymes, the enzyme can actually react with this four-membered ring and open up the ring and relieve that ring strain. 
So now the angles can open up all the way to 120 if it wants to, and there's no way it's going to form that ring again, right? Because it's not going to go back to those 90 degree angles if it can help it. So now the enzyme is locked up with the penicillin molecule. No more bacterial cell wall being built, and the penicillin has effectively killed the bacteria. So that, for me, was kind of the first connection that went, whoa, wait a second. I want to be thinking about these molecules all the way down to the level of individual atoms. So at this point, kept the pre-med, just switched the major to chemistry. The next problem came up uh, when I went and took organic chemistry. So if you're dead set on staying with bio, maybe, I guess you have to take organic. So uh, this might happen to you, just to warn you. We started looking at all sorts of other kinds of molecules uh, that became very interesting to me. I especially love thinking about vitamins and drugs, because I do have that interest in medicine and human health. Uh, these are actually all examples that we'll talk about in freshman chemistry at some point as an example of a connection between a chemical principle we learn and what we can know about how it functions. But uh, what happened here was I thought, oh my gosh, now I could actually, using my chemical knowledge, think about synthesizing these molecules or maybe coming up with new ways to th synthesize them better or synthesize different molecules. And the real clincher was when I started doing some undergraduate research. Any uh, potential Europe's out there? Anyone planning to do research at some point? Excellent. OK. <laughs> So just to be warned, you might fall in love with the subject you do your year off in. This is one of our summer students from this past summer who is also pre-med. Uh, she's continuing to be pre-med, which is fantastic. That didn't happen to me. Once I got into the lab, I didn't want to leave. So I thought, you know what? I think I'll change the medical school plans, and now I'm going to go all the way. Chemistry major, chemistry grad school. And the reason I was able to do that and, and keep with what my original intentions were was to have a career that was fulfilling in terms of helping people and being engaged in science is all of a sudden I realized, you know, as chemists, we can think about better ways to build molecules that are important uh, for making medications. Another thing we can do is we can use our chemistry to understand biological systems so we can help elucidate pathways maybe that are implicated in disease. So the combination of these two things had made my decision, and I ended up uh, coming here for graduate school, actually, and working in Professor Imperiali's lab doing bioorganic chemistry, which means that I synthesized molecules, which I loved, uh, and used them to study biological systems. So really, I'm pretty happy with what I've gotten to do. Um, and I just want to say we're not trying to convert all of you pre-med uh, people by any means. I, my roommate for many years I was going to medical school as I was going to graduate school. And we found we had so many interesting conversations about chemistry, her from the context of practicing uh, and using medications and talking about how they worked on a molecular level, and me talking about my research.